Welcome back to It Was a Square, episode three. Not welcome back to episode three, but welcome back to It Was a Square with Sean. And Brooke. <laughs> this week it was Brooke's turn. What'd you show me? So I showed you one of my favorite movies of all time mm. called Lion. And this week's a little bit different because I feel like the other two, you know, a lot of people have seen them. And this movie mm-hmm. I feel like is so underrated. I have not met another person who has seen this movie unless I have shown it to them. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, like you Google the notebook, you Google the Terminator or just Terminator or notebook and that's what you'll find. You Google Lion and you have to put in directed by or twenty sixteen <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the movie, pause this. We will be spoiling it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> major entirety. spoilers. <laughs> I mean, it's one of my favorite movies for a reason. I feel like everybody should watch it, so... Mm. How did you find it? Super randomly. (laughs) (laughs) March of 2017, I was visiting one of my friends. Yeah, I was visiting her in Louisville, Kentucky, and I actually went to go see a 21 Pilots concert, but (laughs) I digress. Um, And we just had, like, a free night, so we were like, well, let's just go watch a movie. And we looked at what was playing... We hadn't really heard of any of the movies, and so we just kind of watched the trailers, and immediately we were both kind of like, let's go see Lion. We had never, no advertisements Mm -hmm. for it, nothing. We just... Five years ago. Yeah, we just had to... No, four. I saw it in 2017. Okay. I remember there was a... You know how they have, like, show trailers at the beginning of movies? I do. Yes, everyone knows. Okay, Mm -hmm. so uh, there was a... Trailer for a film, could not tell you what it was, but it had subtitles. And some guy in the audience was like, I hate subtitles. And some other stuff. And we were all just like, oh, okay. And then the movie comes on. (laughs) What were you like? (laughs) (laughs) And the whole audience was just kind of like, all right, like, whatever. Keep your thoughts to yourself. Theater's not the place to be heard. Yeah. Opening scene. Opening 30, 40 minutes, just subtitles. <laughs> so, mm. thought that was pretty funny. Mm. Well, I guess before we get into the movie, uh, full disclosure, I have already seen it. Not all of it. You showed it to me about two years ago when, we, when you were living in Nauvoo and I was visiting you and your mom was there. And yeah, you just wanted to show us the beginning, 40 minutes with only subtitles and like the ending... 10-ish minutes, so we got the story, but not a lot of the juice. Well, I wanted to show you the whole thing. Yeah, but but we were pressed for time. We had to get up at 5 in the morning to take my mom to the airport. Mm, I didn't get up. So, yeah. I mean, I got in the car, but that's about it. And he slept, yeah. (laughs) And it was 4 o'clock our time, because we were in... True, yeah. You had just come cross-country. Yeah. So, we weren't weren't staying up to watch the whole thing. (laughs) But it was very good at the time. But to uh, not cheat y'all out, Brooke also showed me something else this week. What was that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For one of my classes, we had to bring like a healthy snack. And so I was like, oh, roasted chickpeas. Super easy, super cheap, really delicious. Done. And so Sean- I've never had them before. So he also doesn't like chickpeas. Sean was out running errands, so I just called him and said, hey, on your way home, can you stop by the grocery store that's across the street from our house and get a couple cans of chickpeas? And he was like, yeah, sure, no problem. A little bit later, I get a call, and he's like, I can't find chickpeas anywhere. Yeah. And I was like, like, are you... I had looked for maybe 15 minutes all up and down the, the, the bean, the can aisle, and a few other aisles. I called you just to ask kind of like... Where are they? Like, yeah, is this some weird? Yeah, thing? <laughs> yeah. I asked a a worker there, like, where are your chickpeas? And he brought me to the same aisle I had already been at. Looked over literally every can there, and then he just kind of looked around for a little bit and said, "Oh, I guess we don't have them." I was like, "Okay, thanks." And I left. That's a story for another day. People not knowing what food is <laughs> is crazy to me. Anyway. So then uh, a little later, I had to go run some errands, and Sean was with me. So we went to a different store, because I was like, well, I, I need to make this. The thing is tomorrow morning at 8. Mm-hmm. So we go to this other store. I walk up. No hesitation. Immediate. Immediate, just dead <laughs> straight line to where you needed to go. Yeah. Didn't even break stride. Grabbed the chickpeas and kept going. And I looked at the cans of what you grabbed. 
and they had garbanzo beans on them. Which the previous store had a plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that they were different. Or that they the were the same. same. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I thought they were different. Yeah, so Sean also learned this week that... I was chick- introduced to the idea of <laughs> yeah. chickpeas and garbanzo beans being the same. So the movie Lion is what Brooke really showed me this week. And at the beginning of this, you know, like first two episodes, we said we'd introduce other things other than movies. But it's the winter and it's cold and we don't have anything really else to do other than show each other movies that we like. So Sean's car is literally, literally stuck behind a wall of snow that has fallen from ice, our roof. Really. Yeah. So could not get out. If we're I not doing much. <laughs> so. so this movie, again, absolutely watch it, but we're going to start like spoiling it now. Why is this one of your favorite movies, Brooke? I love this movie for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's beautifully filmed. The The way the, sh- the sh- shots are cut, the music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got a lot scenery. to say about that a little bit later on, but I absolutely agree. It's based on a true story, and I always love that. Yeah, it's a pretty banging true story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it sheds light on an issue that I'm really passionate about. Just kind of, and brings like awareness mm-hmm. um, of things that people don't yeah. don't really think about. I will say the first like forty five minutes just like rip your heart out. Yeah, I wrote down wretchedly sad. Like they are just awful. Yeah, it just it breaks your heart knowing that it's true. Mm-hmm. Like so, maybe not detail for detail, you yeah. know, because I recognize that a true story in Hollywood is not. Yeah. Exactly true. Even if all those things did happen, maybe there was something in between, but you just get the worst after worst after worst kind of scenario. Yeah, and the fact that that is the reality for so many Mm -hmm. is very um, humbling. Mm -hmm. And for those that are listening to this without watching it and you don't care about spoilers, um, it's about... A young, I would say like five-year-old. Oh, he is five? Yeah, he's five. Okay, a five-year-old um, Indian boy basically gets separated from his family days and days trip away from his family. He doesn't know how to speak Bengali. He speaks Hindi and is just in, in an entirely different world, more or less. Opposite side of the country. It's his story about being homeless as a five-year-old. In a country that he doesn't know or understand. Yeah. He's from... Kwanda, India, which is north, and then okay. he ends up <laughs> he ends up in Kolkata, which is like the big main city on the coast, yeah, to the east. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and that's sixteen hundred kilometers away. So, um, the story opens to this little boy who I think is the cutest little boy in the so world. So cute, such yes. great hair. So cute, a great actor. <laughs> yeah, very good. Great um, at running. <laughs> and he has his family is very poor living in very humble means his mom is a single mom labor mm-hmm. and he, so, or um three kids yeah he's he, the middle he has an older brother and a younger daughter and younger sister yeah sorry younger <laughs> sister and one night he goes to like help his brother um kind of scavenge the area to a train station and he's a little he's young so he falls asleep while his brother goes off to do something wakes up doesn't know where his brother is so he like gets on this train to see if he was like picking up trash or whatever on the train and then the train starts he's the only passenger on the train no one's there he just... It seems like an express train, I think they say. Yeah. So they only stop for fuel, and they don't stop... They don't open the doors for days. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's very sad. It is very sad. Um, And then he... The doors... He finally gets to Kolkata. The doors open. And just this little boy is in a sea of people. Mm-hmm. And he's screaming for his mom or his brother. And, like, no one understands him. Yeah, he speaks Hindi in a place that speaks Bengali. Bengali. Yeah, it's very, yeah, harrowing is the word I would use. It's just really terrible. 
And going back to what you say, like how it's filmed in this early half, because uh, it's, it's really split into two parts, I'd say. Yeah. So the early half, um, it's filmed at his level the whole time. And then he speaks Hindi the whole time, so you're just given subtitles. But whenever someone around him speaks Bengali, you, you have no idea what's going on. Um, everything seems so big and so tall and so loud because that's how it would feel to, if you were his height, his point of view. And it's just so confusing. Um, a lot of conversations about what's going to happen to him happen off screen as they would, like adults making decisions for a young boy. So he's just kind of carted around. You never know really, you know what's going on, but you never know if it's like good or not. It's safe to assume it's not. Yeah. Again, <laughs> so sad. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, awful. But good. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, at one point, I got up... Because, fun fact, um, unrelated to the fact that we watched an <laughs> Indian movie today, tonight, we made curry, and it kind of just happened that way. Yeah. So we're having, you know, very Americanized Indian food while watching an Indian movie, or a movie about India. And I, I got up to get some more curry, and Brooke says, like, babe, hurry, you're missing a sad part. <laughs> like, can't say good, can't say, it's just... But, like, it's important. Of course, in, yeah. In the story. It, it definitely was. Yeah. He seemingly escapes, I think it's implied to be slavery, like, twice, just by literally running away. Yeah. Like, he sees bad things happening to kids around him, or he just has a bad feeling, and he just runs. runs. Yeah. <laughs> Great runner, the little actor. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sammy. Sunny. Sunny Pajar, I think, or Pawar. 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 Yeah. One day is just like sitting outside of this restaurant and mimics this uh, young man like eating soup. And the young man takes notice With of him. With his trash spoon. <laughs> and takes him to the police station. And fortunately, that man spoke Hindi so that he could kind they of could translate. communicate. Yeah. For the first time in so long, it feels like. Yeah. And that scene always gets me because up till that point, like, especially at the train station, it would have taken one person yeah, to he, notice a little boy by himself. He goes to some official-looking place, and people are just yelling at him. Like, get out the, of the way, The person's move. like, speak Bengali, like, get out of here, I mean, no one can understand. He's, like, getting pushed by adults behind him. Yeah. No good. And I just thought, like, in that moment... Anybody... One per- there's could have saved him months. Thousands of yeah. people there. It just takes one person. He's living on the streets for months. How many people noticed him, mm-hmm. and they did nothing. So so shout out to that soup eating guy. <laughs> yeah, he gets shipped off to an orphanage. Mm-hmm. No good. Like one of the first things somebody says to him is, "This is a bad place." It's another orphan with him, yeah. who like ends up being her his like friend. Mm-hmm. Um, I think throughout this short scene in the in the foster home i think that that little girl has a hand double because every time it shows her hands they look very old and weathered and like the hands of a of an orphan girl in india yeah that had to like go through what that little person probably had to go through so but you never see her hands and her face at the same time i think they just tried to do that to really show like this little girl lived a really hard life it also gets me when so she says, like, this is a bad place. And then he asked, does anybody ever leave? And she said, sometimes. Yeah. And then he says, what are you going to do when you leave? And she responds with, I'm going to get a watch. I'm going to buy a watch, yeah. Like, that's her greatest. She's living as an orphan in this terrible place. Mm-hmm. And all she wants is a watch. Yeah. Thankfully, a good character is finally introduced. Other than, shout out to the soup guy. <laughs> yeah. Um... And like a social worker, she tells, oh, we haven't said his name yet. <gasps> Saru. Saru. She tells Saru, like, we have printed your picture. 15 million people read this newspaper. No responses. And he's he has never stopped looking for his mom and his older brother. Yeah. He's like, not like no one contacted. Like, my mom's not looking for me. She says no. Yeah. And it's hard because... He's 1,600 kilometers away in a city that speaks a different language. Yeah, so Just a different world. Yeah. This same scene, he gets adopted by two people from... Tasmania. Tasmania, who are played by Nicole Kidman and David Wynnum. 
And he goes to Australia and it it feels this is the second half. It just feels like a different movie. Yeah. It's much needed as an audience member. I was like, oh thank goodness. Yeah. Time for some happy things. Yeah. I will say, I think we forgot to say this. It's it begins in nineteen eighty six. Yes. So that is when There you go. <laughs> that is when it starts. It's nineteen eighty six. So then twenty years later it like cuts and my man Dev Patel Excuse me? <laughs> emerges from the water. He's a very attractive looking guy, I guess. And so uh yeah, it's I love his hair. It's a little surreal, all grown up. Mm-hmm. He turned into Dev Patel. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, like, you get an inkling of what happened the past 25 years through the following... Years. Oh, sorry, 20 years through, like, their experiences with one another. And Mantosh has had a rough life. Like, he... He struggled with drugs. Yeah. He's... He doesn't really talk to his family because he knows that it's hard on his adoptive mom. Mm-hmm. Nicole Kidman. And then... Sue. <laughs> Yes, all the names. <laughs> and then Saru has been the opposite. Mm-hmm. It it can be inferred. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, I do think this movie has a bit of an anti-smoking sub-message. Sub because every time you see someone smoking, it happens three times. The first time that I'm aware of, uh, he's running away from people trying to steal him. Unclear for what. His first night as a homeless child. Yeah. Like, the only thing he has are the clothes on his back and that little cardboard sheet that he goes back for later and he's literally running from this adult trying to just grab him mini adults true and he runs by a guard who's just standing there in like this long subway tunnel thing just smoking a cigarette he stops to like oh thank goodness there's a guard yeah to see if he'll help him and he just couldn't care less keeps smoking his cigarette and then saru and the unnamed adult run after just run past him and he doesn't lift a finger doesn't do anything bad guard yeah makes me angry <laughs> you, i think you said at the time like this is my least favorite part of the movie or something or maybe yeah, just, it, i hate it, this it makes my skin crawl yeah that he was not as good as the guy eating soup yeah i mean significantly worse yeah <laughs> he's literally watching a child get kidnapped and stood there and did nothing yeah so second time you see it they're walking into the foster home for the first time and you're unclear whether it's good or bad but you see a man like overlooking the new kids walking in, smoking a cigarette. And it turns out to be an awful place. And of course, the third time, the first time you meet Mantosh as an adult, he's smoking a cigarette. So like every time someone's smoking, they tend to be, I don't know if I would consider Mantosh a villain, but just someone that is kind of antagonistic to happiness, I guess. Yeah, like really dark. There's a lot of darkness behind, I think. Yeah. The people who are smoking. He's pretty disconnected from his Indian roots. Yeah. And, like, he has the Australian accent now. He says, mate. Um, At one point, they say, like, do you like cricket? And he says, oh, I love cricket. And he says, Australian or Indian? Who do you root for? And he says, oh, Australia all the way. Yeah. Well, and then someone Can't get asks, more Australian than that. He gets introduced to the Indian culture and kind of, like, foods and smells of his past and that starts triggering all these memories of his brother, of his mother, of all of this. So at this point, it's 2006, and Google Earth is just starting to become a thing. And so somebody says, hey, Google Earth is a thing. Yeah, you try can... and retrace your steps. Find out where you're from. Find out how long that train could have gone and like make a radius. You can tell it just starts eating at him, and the film kind of literally gets darker. It starts raining a lot more, I noticed. Like, just kind of to show his mood. Yeah, he starts having, like, visions. Yeah, it's almost his... a spiritual journey, I'd say, trying to get back. Yeah, he has these... Like, he just sees his brother places. And at first, I think they're his memories while he's in reality. But then, as time goes on, he imagines... Like, at one point, his bro- he's eating in a, a food court in a mall, and his brother is there, like, eating, like, food that yeah. people have just left out. Would do, like, like what they would do back in India. Like, yeah. if they saw scraps, they'd eat them. Yeah. He really unravels. Like, he even says, um, because of our privilege and upbringing, he feels so guilty about that. And, like, his... His, his mother and his brother and... scream his name every night. Yeah, mm-hmm. and... He just becomes completely consumed by the hunt. 
Yeah, he breaks up with his girlfriend, who had been super supportive at that point. He stops talking to his parents. It's kind of implied that, like, literally all he does is... Drink a lot. And, and look. look. And he never finds him. That's the end of the movie. He's so. done. Yeah. He is just done. He, he has a conversation with his mom. But one last little bit, he's just kind of, like, flicking the Google Earth cursor all over the place. And he kind of stumbles upon it. He stumbles upon what he thinks is the train station, or at least familiar mountains or something. Yeah, he kind of lived in, like, a rocky desert area. And obviously, satellite can tell you. <laughs> you can tell that. Wait a second, this is rocky deserty. <laughs> yeah. And something that I think is so crazy. Again, I don't know how much truth there is in this detail, but when he did his calculations, he thought he was only on the train for a couple of days. And so he calculated that he had traveled 1,200 miles, but he had actually traveled 1,600 miles. So even if he had checked out every train station, he would, have he would not have ever found it. Mm -hmm. So literally by a stroke of luck. And when you see it on the map, it looks like he's covered, I want to say like a tenth of what there is to cover. Like he has done this for so long, lost most of the meaningful relationships in his life. And he's only con like accomplished 10% of what he set out to do. And it wouldn't have even been in that 100%, yeah, which is so crazy. He's going down all the same avenues, like places that he's been in his mind over and over and over again the past few months, trying to reconstruct where he's from. And he's there finally in person. He rounds the corner. And yeah, they, they just meet each other in the middle of the street. And the even mother, his mother. The mother immediately recognizes him, Saru. And his appropriately emotional <laughs> yeah he ha he got like a little scar when he was young um because he got hit by a, a motorbike yeah. and so she like looks and checks and of course the scar is still and there. he's like yeah the watermelon and then she's saying it in, <laughs> in hindi so it's like this really triumphant like emotional moment good do where's good do and then she gets really sad and the the man there translating for them says He's gone. He's with God. Saru gets really emotional. Because I, I feel like Gudu is kind of his guiding... He has great memories with his mom, but his like childhood was spent with his brother. Yeah. His brother really was the one who like looked after him. Because his mm -hmm. mom was always working. Of course, yeah. And again, all based on a true story. And at the very end, they show Saru showing his... Or introducing his adoptive parents to his real mom. And it's very sweet. Yeah, it's just a crazy that that's a true story, but, like, super awesome. And then at the very end, it does, like, the... There's just, like, words on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Explains what happened to Gudu, his brother. And, it, yeah, it's crazy. He That same night that Saru went missing and got on that train and the train closed and, and went, he had probably died hours earlier just on a different train or on a different track being hit by a train. Yeah, so his mom lost both of her sons in one night, Yeah, she thought. Mm -hmm. It also said that she like was obviously super surprised that Saru showed up and super grateful, but she never moved. Yeah, she always thought he'd come back, yeah. so she never moved. Very sweet. And the final line is that because of his, I, I, I don't want to call it list, but because of the way he like misspoke as a young kid, his name isn't Saru, it's Sheru, and that means lion. The name of the movie. Yes. <laughs> and it's just really, ah, uh, it's really awesome. It's funny, the first time I watched that, I totally forgot that it was called, like, you're just so focused in the mm -hmm. story, and then when it says that, like, li lion comes on the screen, you're like, oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called lion, but... The actual last thing it says, but 80,000 kids go missing in India every year. Mm -hmm. So this is like a happy ending for, for one, one of them. Yeah. So. And it took so much for that happy ending to, happy ending to come about. Makes me feel extremely Adopt. grateful. <laughs> grateful for my life. And then, yeah, like inspires you to like help, help and mm -hmm. yeah, do more. So super recommend. Um, this is the second time I watched it again, but this is the first time with that second half. I only saw the very, very ending and all of the first half. 
Oh, the really, really sad part. Yeah, so really a lot better the second time. (laughs) But I remember we were watching it this time, and I, at the very end, he goes to his girlfriend's house and is like, I found where my mom is, and I'm going to go there. And I remember watching it the first time, like, I have no idea who that girl is. (laughs) So this time I'm like, oh, look, it's Lucy. Yeah. I know her. Yeah. And it's just very, it's very good. Also, Dev Patel is so tall. I know. (laughs) I just think it's such an underrated movie. I wish it would have gotten a lot more press Mm -hmm. or a lot more attention. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I never heard of it until you showed it to me, but I was kind of MIA as far as movies go in 2016. Interesting. Yeah. (laughs) It is a tearjerker. I did not show it to Sean with hopes that he would cry. Um... He didn't, if you're wondering, but that was by no means my intention. I, of course, cried. You did? I'm just kidding. I, yeah, I there's, there's mascara on our blanket. On our blanket. <laughs> Freshly washed, two I days. Know. I wear mascara maybe once a month <laughs> now, but the day I do. It, it's a heavy movie, mm-hmm. but it is so worth watching. Absolutely. I don't even really feel like I should rank this movie. I don't really consider it rankable it's off the I don't charts. consider it entertainment as much as it is it's more of a message than it is a movie yeah and that's those are the kind of movies that i like <laughs> i lean towards yeah they don't have to be always like sappy or or hard but i like things with messages and like informative things next week is my turn i don't know what's going to be i know it's not going to be terminator 2 i asked brooke if me uh, like trying to upsell it, trying to talk big about it, was enough to get her interest peaked into like needing to watch it soon, and she said no. <laughs> so Terminator Two will be another day. To be fair, I just think there should be a break in yeah. between the Terminators for you guys. <laughs> so They're so good. Well, the second one is so good. Yeah, yeah, and I'm excited to watch it. But I do not know what it's gonna be, but check it out when it comes out next week. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.